beautiful friends. Welcome to my Minimalist Monday video series. This video was originally recorded live on Facebook, so you'll have to excuse the little black bars on the side because I didn't figure out until a few weeks in how to turn my camera, but I'm gonna be doing a KonMari of my entire house, and that means a huge declutter. I hope you'll come along for the ride. Let's get started. Welcome back to another Minimalist Monday. It's Laura, and today I am going to take you guys through the top of their clothes, what I do with my older two children who are a little bit older so they can make their own decisions, and the best laundry hack I have for you. <laughs> so, saved my total sanity having four kids with lots of laundry. Just as a recap, we're going through the KonMari method. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's the life changing magic of tidying up, and it's by Marie condo and she recommends that you group everything together and then go through each category at a time so so far we're on clothing I have done my clothes and the baby's clothes and today is gonna to be the toddler and the older kids and I'm, the older kids are actually responsible for doing their own clothes and I'm gonna explain how we've done that and then we give you that laundry hack that's totally saved my sanity so I have, just like the before, pulled out all of the toddler clothes from all the areas in the house. So you want to grab everything in that category and put it all in one spot so you can see what you have. This was so helpful for me last week. If you remember, I did the baby clothes and I did notice a couple gaps and I was able to go to the store, get a couple pieces, fill those gaps because she did make the transition up to the next size really this past week. So it was great to know exactly what I needed to make that happen and then I feel like I have a, a complete wardrobe for her. We're gonna do the same thing with the toddler only it's a little easier with the toddler because he's not in between sizes like the babies grow like crazy they grow like weeds right so you have to switch to clothes much more often and I try to keep on, on top of that as they switch sizes then I'm, I'm pulling the old size out and putting it into a sell pile or a donate pile and going ahead and doing that as they switch sizes. With the toddlers, it's a little bit more of a longer transition. So I look at spring and I look at fall generally, although I'm doing it kind of out of order because it's not spring or fall right now. I'm just doing the whole lot just so we can get it done. I will preface it with saying that in the spring, I will go through the toddler's clothes again with him and make sure that he actually fits in all the pieces that I'm keeping. For the younger kids, I make the decisions for for them Marie Kondo is all about does it spark joy so I'll be able to go through this lot really quickly and then my older children I'll explain what we do with them after I'm done with the toddler clothes so I pulled everything out of the closet I pulled everything out of the laundry and everything out of the drawers and so I'm gonna run through and just like I did before I have them kind of grouped in categories so I have like pajamas all together so this this should be pretty quick because I already know most of it sparks joy I'm really kind of looking for things that are stained or um, that no longer fit him at this point. So these are good. They're going right back into the closet. Basically, obviously, anything that's in the wash, you know, is pretty worn. Next up, long sleeve shirts. Here's one of his favorites. If you remember from the past weeks that we only wear about 20% of our clothes, so we tend to reach for the same thing over and over and over again. So if you're concerned about getting rid of things that don't spark joy, just realize that you're not actually reaching for those items to begin with when you are getting dressed anyway. Like I only wore 20%. I wear 100% of my clothes because they're all things that spark joy. All right, moving on to sweatshirts. All right, now we're into short sleeve shirts. Okay, this is a funny story, so we're gonna get rid of this one. It does still fit him, but it scares him. So he never wants to wear the shark shirt. Um, and so it's gonna go in the cell pile. It's not, that's not a funny story, but you can see how kids even have, gravitate towards something that does or does not spark joy for whatever reason. We're gonna get rid of this one too. And this is more me because it's like, it's actually a little too small for him and he always wants to wear it. So if I get rid of it now, he won't know that it's missing. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Now, in his, his closet, I actually have these categorized into short sleeve shirts are in one spot, long sleeve shirts are in another spot, sweatshirts in another spot. And remember, I, I color coordinate them, so they um, kind of go light to dark in my closet. In the kids' closet, I don't even bother that. So I just put them like shirts with like shirts because a lot of times I'm going to, you know, my son, hey, go pick something to wear. I actually have his stuff all low enough where he can pick it, and then I don't have to worry about having it be color coordinated. For me, in my own closet, I do have lights to darks, but that's just because it's so much easier for me to visualize. All right, moving on. Okay, he's got some socks. We're keeping those because we need socks. Got some undies because Lord willing, we're gonna potty train soon. Woo! 
I know, I cannot wait. And then he's got these pajamas. These are summertime pajamas. I know that they both fit him. They're actually already folded like Marie Kondo way, Mari way, because they came out of the drawer. So we're just gonna keep those, put those to the side. One sun hat. And some of the stuff I've not gone through, like you guys didn't see me go through the winter stuff because we only have one. We only have one coat, one pair of uh, snow pants. These are all good. I'm just gonna fold them back up the KonMari way. The swim shirts don't like to fold nicely, I will say. So those are a little tricky with KonMari. I'm gonna show you how to fold some of the other stuff though. So those are a good size pant. All right, moving on to shorts and pants, and I'll show you how I fold these. So th this is the pair of pants. Um, he's outgrown these. I am going to sell those, and I think we're good for these. Yep, okay, so let me show you the KonMari fold. Hopefully you guys can see this on the bed. They're folded the same as adult pants, so fold in half, and you're gonna lay them out like this. With kids' pants, I don't bother folding the crotch in like the adult pants because it's not in the way, really. So just folding up two-thirds and then into thirds and that equals this lovely little roll. And that's the whole point of what we're trying to accomplish with KonMari is that you look in and you can see everything and it's all sticking up. So it's super easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. Once you guys get in the habit of folding the KonMari way, it doesn't take any more time, I promise. And it's actually really nice to be able to look in and see what you have available for yourself or your kids. So with the pants and the shorts and stuff, everything in the drawer, I do actually put it in color coordinated so that I can see what we have there. So we have one pair of jeans, two pairs of jeans, three pairs of jeans, which is a pretty decent number. I'm hoping these will actually take him through into the fall. Okay, now all we have left is the shorts. With shorts, I do a little bit differently with kids on how they fold because they don't have like much of a crotch area. So I'm gonna just fold it in half and then I'm just gonna kind of roll until it becomes that nice little ball. You will be able to find out what works best with each piece of clothing the more you do it. I'm also, at the same time I'm doing this, I'm looking for a bunch of duplicates because I don't really want to have four pairs of shorts in the same color scheme. And a lot of times it's the parent when you're dressing a smaller children it's the parent who has to it has to spark joy in me as well so if a pair of pants or shirt or something for my son doesn't spark joy in me it's not something I'm gonna reach for to dress him in so it's kind of like the parents choice so let's talk about older kids real quickly. My older two children are completely responsible for doing their own clothes. I actually sat them down and we talked about what sparks joy and the whole philosophy behind uh, Marie Kondo and the KonMari method. They were totally on board and it was really shocking to me. I mean, I knew that I saw them in the same clothes over and over and over and over and over again. And I knew that they were only wearing 20% of the clothes in their closet because that's just statistically what we all do. But to actually visualize this, I mean, they were getting rid of a ton of stuff they really caught on because you get to a certain age and you definitely can make a decision on whether or not something is sparking joy for you so I would encourage you with older children to let them do their own clothes and I was very clear with them that they did not have to keep anything that did not spark joy I didn't want them to keep it just because I they thought they would get in trouble for getting rid of it we were able to really quickly see where some gaps were go out and they were with me in the shopping experience to fill in those gaps with things that really did spark joy so that they have 100% of the wardrobe that actually they spark joy and they love. So it's very easy to get them on board and their closets are completely done. We look at their clothes twice a year in spring and fall as they're going into a season just to see what gaps are missing and then they're growing and obviously, you know, we, what we need in new sizes. It just makes everything so much easier because then you actually love whatever you have in your closet and you wear it all the time. And then that decision fatigue that I talked about before where you have to sit in the, you know, you're looking at this big closet of, of stuff and you can't even process what to wear that day and you think that's when you think oh I don't have any clothes but in reality you actually have too many clothes and your mind is going into dis decision fatigue so let me share with you my biggest laundry hack my children are older my two older ones are older I've done this with them for probably since the youngest one was maybe seven seven eight so I would say that children over about eight-ish years old can do this, maybe even a little bit younger. So I've gotten each family member their own basket of, of uh, for their clothes, and they are responsible for putting their clothes in the basket, and they are responsible for doing their laundry on a specific day of the week. So one of my kids has Monday, and it's his responsibility to put his clothes through the wash on Monday. I've showed them how to use the washer, they know how to do the soap, and we have a really easy and like non-toxic you know, stuff down there, so 
so I'm not concerned about anything. Like we don't use harsh chemicals like bleaching and things like that. They know how to run the quick wash. They know how to put them in the dryer. And then they are responsible for taking them all the way through the whole process from start to finish, including putting them away, which is the part that is tricky. Sometimes they live out of the basket <laughs> rather than put them away, but it is really their responsibility. And this has taken total pressure off me to have laundry having to go all the time every day. They pretty much do their own stuff once a week and then once every other week ish they'll put their sheets through at the same time so they'll do a load with with sheets I kind of do all the towels together so I'll take their towels but they sometimes put their towels through when they're doing their own laundry as well which is also another easy method so guess who is to blame if they don't have any clean clothes them and it only takes a couple times of this to really have them take responsibility and realize that the consequence is that you get to wear something that's dirty or stinky or something else and they've really done great so I totally off me the other thing that I do I have a basket for myself the toddler and the baby we all go into one basket and I run the whole thing through on cold I do not separate lights and whites and dark colors. You guys may remember back from when I was doing my closet, I had a white shirt that wasn't so white anymore. I just really try not to buy white. I find that light colors are actually pretty decent. They don't get stained or they don't get dull, but the whites really do need to be kept separate if you have white, white clothes. I don't have much, so I'd rather have the convenience factor being able to throw the whole thing in. So I do our laundry about twice a week, depending on how full the basket gets, and I'm responsible for the baby, the toddler, and myself. So it's made it really simple though to assign the responsibility for my older children to have their own basket and do that from the beginning I was like oh they're not gonna get this they totally got it really quickly from a very young age on up so I would encourage you if you have older children that number one take them through this KonMari process themselves involve them in the process even younger kids I mean, we've done this for years so even younger kids can really grasp the concept of sparking joy and then you know get rid of the things that they're not wearing or you'll be able to notice trends too like even my toddler he'll go in and he has his favorite shirts that he'll pick out every time and so if I notice that he's really not wearing something he's not going for it I sometimes it'll be it'll be gone <laughs> but with older ones include them in the whole process and it'll be great this is minimalist Monday for this week I'm gonna put back these clothes into the drawer and in the closet and then I'll show you now I have them all grouped together so I'm gonna take the shorts and I kind of put in my colors. I do colorize the shorts and the pants just because then it makes it easier for me to find things in them. And I'm usually the one grabbing them out for the kids. And we'll do the same with the pants, put the jeans in the back. And I think I mentioned before, but my toddler and my baby both share a drawer. And if the clothes get a little crazy in the drawer, then I know that it's time to go through some of them because they really do fit perfectly fine in this drawer. All right, so here's the drawer. You guys remember the, the baby stuff from before. Here's all the burp cloths, blankets, and her onesies. I did switch them over this week to the six month onesies. Got her some new booties to fill in because we don't have any for the uh, older sizes. So those will come up soon. This is her pants. And then we go to his. This is pajamas and socks and underwear at the moment is not being used so it's just kind of back there when it is more in rotation it'll come up front swimsuit in the back because it's off season the shorts and then we have pants but you'll see you know how easy it is with the KonMari method to be able to find things again you know when you're going through your drawers I would encourage you guys to do this with your clothes this is the end of clothes yay the end of clothes next up on KonMari is books I think is next on hers or papers I can't remember which one comes first it's gonna be either books or papers have a great week guys and we'll talk to you soon if you like this video I'd love for you to give it a big thumbs up share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video I post videos every week on minimalist living and transitioning to a vegan lifestyle see you on the next one